Welcome back to part two of the Bill podcast, an interview with the legendary Lisa Gagan. Such a lovely lady. We kick off part two by discussing some of the fun Polly storylines. As time went on, they started to have a lot of fun with the series as a whole. And Polly directed the Sun Hill Panto. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> remember that? Oh, my. You know what? That was the best. That was. And I'm not sure that the episode, people sort of said the episode might not have been. Well, some, <laughs> the public used to love it. People used to come up to me and love it. But I think within, maybe it wasn't so correct. Hmm. I don't know. It was full. We had the best time ever. We all went away. We'd never because we didn't go away on the bill. You know that was the beauty of the bill. We we all live nearby, so you could get your own life. You could you know you could run home and get the kids from school and do all sorts of things. But that we went away. It was fantastic. We, we had a great time. Maybe too much fun. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. It was so good. Yeah, that I love that episode though. The only thing I was disappointed was I didn't get to dress up, did I? Everybody got to dress up, but Polly, being the director and being all serious, <laughs> just had to wear ordinary clothes. Yeah. So, you know, after guys dressed as women, the, <laughs> the women were dressed as, you know, Aladdin or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I did feel a little bit left out on that one. I had this brown cardigan, I remember, at the time. <laughs> yeah. You did get a beautiful scene lit by moonlight with the late, great Kevin Lloyd. Oh, did I? God, I can't even remember that. Yeah, you, Polly goes outside thinking it's all a disaster and Tosh follows her out to say, they're cheering for you. They want you to go out and bow, you know? Oh, my God, I've got to watch that again. Yeah, it's a lovely oh, that moment. Sounds that sounds really good. Yeah. yeah. I just remember the fun. What was he like, Kevin? Yeah, do you know what? I didn't work with him that much. Obviously, I knew Kevin Lloyd before I arrived. He seemed a really nice seller. I mean, obviously, when he, his character was a CID character, we didn't really cross over so much then. I mean, obviously, you're hanging about together in the green room all the time. But actually going out and filming for the day, I was rarely with Kevin. But he seemed like a really nice fella to me. He was a nice bloke, yeah. He seemed a good laugh. And, yeah, I didn't really know him as well as I knew some of the others, though. But I did get to son and his lovely daughter, his son and daughter came to work at the Bill. Oh, cool. And I did get to know them. Yeah, they were lovely. Poppy was lovely. Another fun episode, uh, you all went paintballing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Andrea. Me and Andrea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was right. That was a good episode. That was funny. And it looked good, didn't it? It oh, looked yeah. good, that episode. At that time, you know, you just got into the uh, hour-long episodes again, and I feel like the production values went that little bit further at that time. You got a great episode around then called Lola. It was written by Terry Hodgkinson. I love that episode. I love that one. I, I mean, that could be right up there for me, that episode. I loved it. What a good, wasn't that, that was a good one, wasn't it? That was a fab and episode. Got, and it was Chris. Yeah, C Chris, Chris Simmons, Simmons, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, my God, and a joy. So it was me and Joy, and that's right, and Chris was the bad guy, wasn't he? That's right. In it. I loved that episode. I really loved it. It was, who wouldn't love, I mean, if you were the person playing that part, because it was like, everybody was like, yeah, and Polly sort of saved the day, didn't she? woo -hoo! It was a really good one. Because she found Lola, didn't she? Yeah. Kerry is like that kind of smarmy CID, and, and you just keep putting her in her place and just say, just because you're in CID doesn't give you the monopoly on brains, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's how we were, exactly, that's right. It was like, you know, yeah, I loved it. Everything about that episode was brilliant. And we loved Chris. We loved working with Chris. Because then when Chris came back to be a regular, oh, this was... Chris came back, to, and then we knew that they were auditioning for a, a, a regular, and a, a guy came in, and he was really nice, and we were all like, oh, he's lovely, he's nice, blah, blah, blah. And then Chris walked through the door. 
And we all went, ah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> it was awful. Bit. But I think, you know, you're just, oh, he's nice. And isn't it? When Chris came through, I think it was Hugh Higginson as well. I think he actually went in. We went in and said, oh, you know, we worked with Chris before and he was brilliant and he was so professional and he was great. And I think they'd already decided it was going to be Chris anyway. So we were so happy to get him. And then we went to, uh, we did the, was it Quinnan's wedding? And Mark, Jim Carver, had to fall into the water. So we had to have, like, you know, professional divers there. And Chris was there with his dad working as the professional diver. No like, way. Like, dad. And we were like, whoa, Chris, what's going on? He said, yeah, I'm joining you lot next week. Wow. And I remember thinking, like, yeah, so it worked out really well. All the little coincidences. Yeah. I loved that episode, Lola. I really loved it. I loved every, everything about that episode. I even enjoyed watching it. I liked watching it. I thought, oh, I really like this. I just like the way it's unfolding and everything. Yeah, Terry wrote a lot of episodes for you. It's nice when a writer just grabs hold of a character and takes them that step further. Oh, it was brilliant. And that's what he did with that episode. He took my character to the next realm, didn't he, really? Mm, mm. If you've got a good writer, then that's it. Everything else falls into place. Yeah. Well, they certainly made the most of you when it went into the characters' private lives. And they, I mean, poor old Paul, I mean, because she was a great copper, but she was so unlucky in love. <laughs> you know? Oh, she was so... Oh, I could have shook her. <laughs> could have shook her. Could have... If she was my sister or my mate, I would have got her by the shoulders and shook her and said, pull yourself together, <laughs> young lady. If she was, oh, so unlucky in love. And yet she had Tony Stamp. Tony Stamp loved her. Why could she not love him back? Her life would have been so much easier, wouldn't it? Yeah. Them two could have got on and it would have been a lovely ending. But no, of course, Polly doesn't want Tony Stamp. She wants married Dave Quinnan. Yeah. I know. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Bad person. Yeah. But then it made it just a bit, a bit more exciting, really, to play as well, didn't it? Oh, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you ever open up a script and just go, no, you're joking. You're not going to do this, are you, Paul? You know, was oh. it? Yeah, exactly, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It was mostly to do with, you know, like, oh, my God, Quinnan is married <laughs> and Polly trying to pursue him and decides to finally tell him at the very last moment, I think, the day before he's getting married <laughs> as well. What is that all about? <laughs> yeah, so it was funny. And it was kind of out of character, wasn't it, that she would do, you know, he was getting married. Like, I, I always felt a bit like, oh, no, Polly, that's bad of you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it was a bad thing, but... Did you and Andy discuss it when, when these scripts were unfolding? Did, I mean, presumably as mates, you found it quite funny, you know. But you, you... Hysterical. <laughs> and I used to say to Andy, I've latched onto your character so that now I get some woohoo, some really good parts. <laughs> <laughs> You know, take that laugh, but in a way, it was kind of true. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, probably like Dave. Yeah, so I think last, getting on, yeah, getting on the Dave Quinnan character <laughs> suddenly, probably had this whole world. And I don't know, she was such a goody two shoes before that. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, it, I wouldn't say boring, but I was, I was pleased that she had a little bit more going on. Little yeah, and I love the scenes where with Jenny, with his wife. I love those. Well, me and her were so close. It was great. She was a bit more feisty then. Oh, and I love that one when um, they had the hen night yeah. and they did that shot where of all the feet of all the girls yeah. tapping away to the music and then you just got Polly's feet at the end not moving. Yeah. Like a real party pooper. I found that really hard, that one, that episode, because we had so much fun filming that, that, you know, when the word action was said, I had to be misery gut. <laughs> so, so we'd all be laughing, having a great time, and it was like, yeah, action. And she, I, was, I had to be a real misery. 
actually found that quite hard. I used to keep thinking, oh, do not look like you're having any fun <laughs> at all. Yeah, because it was a really good episode because it was all the girls together. We really had that luxury of all us girls being together. Yeah. You know, there's some guys who were with the boys all the time, which was, they were brilliant, but it was nice to have all the girls together. Obviously, it sounds like a very busy schedule, but did you actually have time to hang out and go and have nights out? And I felt like we were together loads, actually. Yeah, we were together a lot. We'd all go out with our families, you know. We'd all meet up. We'd all we had a lot going on, but obviously we all had our own homes and families. And but yeah, it was. Oliver, you were there all day practically. You know, you were doing, you were doing twelve-hour days. Sometimes it was like enough. Now we're see, you know, so you know, like you, like you do with your own family. Yeah, no, we all got on great. We went out together. There was a, a load of social occasions that happened throughout the year that we'd all go to together, and we'd all thoroughly enjoy it because we were all there. Hanging out with that lot, even now, hanging out with that lot is just so comfortable, so much fun, so easy. It was, it was really felt really comfortable, actually. Yeah. And when you were watching these guys work, I mean, obviously there's a lot of storylines going on. Was there any like any storylines you weren't involved with, but you particularly admired what your colleagues were doing? Oh, my God, yeah. I used to think that all the time. When I used to watch it, especially if it was an episode I wasn't in, because then I feel like you can really get into it more. You're not worried, you're not thinking about your bit. Oh, some of the stuff was brilliant. Even before I went in, I knew that I was dealing with people that not only were brilliant actors, and but the gruelling schedule and the whole set up of everything to do all that and then to meet everybody and they were so nice and down to earth and yeah no I had admiration for everyone really Trudy of course is fantastic isn't she I don't understand why she's not a dame she is phenomenal she is a dame to us yeah that's that what right. we call it. quite right yeah she's a dame yeah exactly in fact every year they had a cricket match and you would win the I think it was the Dame Trudy trophy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She was a she was just so, such a oh, she's brilliant, isn't she? She is. She's such a lovely person. So lovely. But her acting great, right, isn't she? She's so, oh yeah. I remember when when I met her, I said, Is there a moment was there a moment she was particularly proud of? And and it's the scene where um Mary Jo Randall's character gets killed off. She felt she was been particularly good in that. I mean, I rewatched it the other day, and you can't help but cry any time Trudy, as June is in jeopardy or is hurt. It feels like a relative's being hurt. You know, it feels like a friend's <laughs> being hurt. Yeah, I know. She's got that thing where you connect with her, don't you, on screen? I connected before I met her. I was thinking, oh my god, I've just got to remember not to call her June. You know, but with me and Trudy within 10 minutes, and as though, although she is lovely as well as June, you realise she is a totally, obviously she's not June, she's her own person, she's totally different, but I know exactly what you mean. You connect with her character, don't you? Yeah. Wasn't there that scene where they said that um, Lady Di or someone said that she's one of her favourite characters on the TV? Wow. And it was Trudy. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I think... Huge, you know, something really... She probably would never acknowledge that almost, truly, to us. You know, she wouldn't even think that way, which just adds a bit of how nice she is. And Eric. Oh, Eric, yeah. I still see Eric, you know, he only lives around the corner. Oh. I feel, yeah, I see Eric loads and I see his wife and his boy and, yeah. So I feel connected to Eric still. He was brilliant though, Eric, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. And also, when I met it, well, he was, I think, maybe one of the most different, I felt, when I, it's hard to remember, but I remember um, when I first joined, you know, Sergeant Cryer, looks a bit strict, don't he? He looks a bit, and then I met Eric, and I just thought, oh my God, he's like this, the youngest bloke I've ever met, 
<laughs> and I was expecting kind of school teacher, kind of older person, and I was wrong in every way. He was, he's a good laugh, yeah. Yeah, I love working with Eric, and I love the, I like the relationship that Polly and Sergeant Cryer had. Yeah, working with him was great. We worked together a lot. It's, it's nice, isn't it, because you, we're literally spoilt for choice, yourself included, yeah. of, of brilliant actors doing brilliant work at that time, you know. Yeah, they were, uh, Mary Jo Randall, you mentioned her, she was quality, wasn't she, Mary Jo? Absolutely yeah. quality. quality. There's an episode she did of Inspector Morse where she holds her own against John Thor. I bet, yeah. yeah. I can believe that, even against the marvellous John Thor. Mm. She is quality. Mm. Yeah. And I'll tell you what I always thought was brilliant as well. Clara. Oh, Clara Salomon. Salomon, yes. yeah. She was brilliant as well, wasn't she? Absolutely superb. Yeah, I loved scenes with her as well. Yeah, she too was good. But little Suzanne was brilliant. Wasn't she little? Look, she, I think she's <laughs> little. I but she was brilliant, wasn't she? Well, Andrea. Andrea was great as well, wasn't she? Andrea was quality actress. Yeah, you know what? We were really lucky. We were so lucky, really, because everybody just got on with it. Nobody questioned. Everybody just trusted everybody else's performance. I remember Eric saying to me once, you can only play the king if everybody else around you is treating you like the king. You know, it's no good you've got part of the king and no one else is playing their part that you are the king. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So everybody was so brilliant. It was like you had to... You needed each other to make your part look good. You know, someone else has to react in a certain way to make your next line make sense. Do you know? So everybody was so giving, really. A very generous crowd of people. And what's it like, as an example, because in Greg Donaldson's last episode, you yeah. you share it, all his exit episode actually in his flat. And, uh, I mean, you're there supporting not just Greg doing his main episode but his actual last episode you know and that, that must be when you're supporting a colleague who's leaving the series and they're leaving a big job I mean it was Greg's decision to go but yeah when, when you were, yeah I know what you mean and also it's not as sad as it sounds because it sounds a bit like oh that's so sad last episode. but when people decide to leave and that you're almost in awe of them <laughs> then you're almost like oh my god look at you you've got the cut do you know what I mean? Like go on to maybe bigger and better, or you you admire them for that. So there's never any sadness. It's almost like you're like, oh, you know, you want to do the best to make their last episode going out great, maybe to show for what they may get in the future. It's not a sad feeling when someone's going. It was almost like, oh, well, good for you. Of course you're going to miss them. But that is acting, isn't it? They're the, you think, oh, you've got the guts to move on and. Yeah, he was a nice fellow, and I didn't get to act with him much before that either, Greg. No, he he, he and he's now a, a psychotherapist. Is he? Yeah, and Is and he? a and a really good one. Do you know what? He's a very calm person. He was a very calm. Yeah, I can see that. Do you know that? I could see that. Mm. Yeah, nice, nice bloke. Really nice fella. Oh, that's wow. That's a big grown up, sensible job. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big important job. It's interesting what other people have done, like Andrew McIntosh. He's in IT for a charity building wheelchairs for disabled children. Oh really? Mm. Oh, and I bet his kids are all growing up now because he had those beautiful daughters. Yeah. Yeah. Until he's followed in his footsteps, she's his. One of his daughters is acting now. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, see, he was nice. He was one of the guys that was there when I first joined. Oh, my God, that's a long time ago. Well, it must have been... I mean, we we talk about actors who choose to leave. It must have been a very strain when Paul Marquess came in and took over and that real big transition, like, like a sledgehammer going through the series. And um, obviously, people like Ben lost lost their jobs and... Yeah. Were you worried that you? Yeah. Were you worried that it could be you as well? That was well, the... that was a funny time, and that was we were all really shocked. That was, you know, normally, before well, that didn't really happen. You know, you heard 
we were in the know a little bit more, I felt, until Paul came in and that happened and people had lost their jobs and it was really awful, really. It was really sad. Everybody felt a bit unsure and a bit... I mean, had it have been, for me personally, had it have been maybe a little bit earlier on, I think I'd have been a lot more worried. I was then baby crazy in my head. <laughs> I wanted to have a baby. So for me... Do you know what I mean? It wasn't. It was sort of. It wasn't my prior. My main, main. Of course, it was my job, and I loved it with all my heart. I mean, really, if anything, I kind of put off having babies so I could stay here a bit longer. That's how much I loved it. But when I got to the point where me and my husband, we were like, right, we're ready for a family. So I was really, although it was awful. And it was terrible, and he came in and did... I've got to admit, I wasn't as scared as I might have been had it have been a few years earlier. Because then I'd have thought, oh, no, I don't want to lose this job, I love it. Whereas now I've got to the point where I was thinking, you know what, I really do want to start a family. And if I don't start now, the years are passing quickly. I need to start thinking about family. And also I knew that I kind of... If I had a baby, I wanted to be with the the full-time mummy and I thought so in a way for me personally selfishly for me it wasn't as scary in that sense but of course there was an atmosphere in the air and it wasn't that security had gone if there is something as security in acting because we are all actors we're all on six months contracts so you know really you're only there for the next six months that's what acting is isn't it and also each time someone goes, it means that there's an opportunity that they might go on and do something else that's equally or better or... That is the life of an actor, isn't it? You never become an actor thinking you're going to be in work for... You know, the thought that I would have been in work on the bill for all those years seems crazy, really. That wasn't the original plan. I thought I'd be... You get a week here, you get a week there, you have six months off, you get another week here, you get another week there... So in a way, we were already, all of us were already over the limit of our quota of working. Paul really made the most of the likes of you and Graham and Mark and Trudy and, and Jeff and Tony O'Callaghan. He, he actually put you guys front and centre and gave you really dramatic storylines. Arguably the most dramatic you each had to do in your time. Yeah, yeah, you're right, actually, yeah. Yeah, and you know what? He was good to me because when he came in, I was pregnant already. When he, when he arrived, I was already pregnant, so my head was a little bit somewhere else anyway. We were filming Andy's leaving episode, and obviously, like you just said, then these are Andy's leaving episodes. I want to do the best work I've ever done for Andy because he's leaving. Do you know what I mean? I want them to be great for him. So, and I'm obviously pregnant. And I'm not, Polly's not pregnant, so there is that, the growing bump and everything. But to be fair, when he come in, he, he was, I know he is like, you know, the hatchet trick man or whatever, but he was actually good to me. He was, you know, he was like, oh, I remember um, there was a time when I had, I was oh, working on one episode and another episode and did it. And he said, I said to him, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm, you know, I'm seven months pregnant. And he was like, listen, don't worry. We'll sort this out, take you out of that one, put you in. And I thought that was really, he's been quite kind to me. And when I went back after having Oliver, he, my schedule was nowhere near as heavy as it had been. So I felt that, yeah. And also, if you think about it, that is his job, isn't it? He's the producer. He came in, he wanted to make his mark on it, as all producers. They come in, they want to put their stamp on it. You don't want to just follow the guy before, do you? You want it to be this was the time when you were there. So him using all of us for front storylines and in a way, I guess, if you were coming at it from his point of view, that is what you do, isn't it? Well, yeah. And, and you know, it added three million viewing figures onto the average ratings. Oh, did it? God. Yeah. yeah. Well, they then. <laughs> yeah. He, he let you go away and come back and then gave you that insane storyline with 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 Connie Hyde 
I mean, it, it, is she one of those people who's like absolutely lovely in real life and terrifying when she's acting? Because I, I, she's something else, isn't she? No, you know what I wanted to say. I'm going to say then because I'm I see Connie a lot. She she's just like Cassie Bradford. <laughs> Ooh, wouldn't that be all? <laughs> same. She's exactly the same. <laughs> you know when my kids see Connie on the telly. I've shown them an episode of her being Kathy Bradford. They can't believe it. They actually yeah. can't believe it. No way. That is not Connie. That's not Connie. I said, well, you're looking at her. There she is. That's Connie. No, no. Yeah, where they know Connie is being so nice, they just can't believe that she was that <laughs> evil. She was, so, she was so good at being bad, wasn't she? Oh, absolutely phenomenal. And her the same age as my kids so over the years you know they know her and they know the kids and they just can't get over it they're like what and then she was bad in coronation street wasn't <laughs> yeah, she yes. she's just so good at being bad and obviously she's not like that obviously <laughs> she's not like that you who is like that you'd be too yeah, you'd be yeah. locked up somewhere surely <laughs> i hope <laughs> she was crazy wasn't she she was a Oh, my God, how evil was she? Oh, yeah. She's Polly. Kathy Bradford. Yeah. Some of the scenes we had were a little bit crazy, I felt. You know, there was a scene that I had to say to her once, something like, you're my best friend, or I'm so glad you're my friend. It was so cheesy and corny anyway, and the woman was destroying <laughs> Polly. <laughs> say this line. I remember thinking, oh, my God, how am I going to say that line and make it sound normal like as though that would be a normal thing i would say or anyone would say i kind of I what episode it was in or anything but i just remember being in the front office and having to say this line thinking oh i've really got to make this sound <laughs> and it felt very unnormal very unnatural but connie odd bad girl well you are just out of this world with all, all the scenes in court and having to go to prison and I mean you're just so so good in that I really admire what you did because you're just crushed Polly is broken and you just smashed that yes smashed the broken bit <laughs> hey, no, you know what the mad thing is the court scene was already on we've got the court scene was there within the um, Boson house in the ah. building so we've got the hospital set, we've got the police set, and we had the court set. Now, you'd often walk through that court set, get into, I don't know, get into crossing through to somewhere or something, and think nothing of it. And, but when I was actually stood in that dock, I remember thinking, oh, my God, it was almost easy to play. Somehow it felt, it felt terrifying. It's like, oh, my God, imagine if you really were here. Well, obviously, that's what I was doing, imagining that I really was there. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it was easy to play almost. The court felt so intimidating when all when it was set up to filming, even though I, I'd crossed through it a thousand times to get to the canteen. Suddenly, when we were filming in there, it was almost easy, that part, or that, that broken bit. That was a good storyline, wasn't it? That euthanasia one. Yeah, it's a fantastic storyline. And he was lovely. Talking of quality actors, Tim Dante. He was a really good actor. He had a really sort of presence about him. It was easy to, to do all those scenes with him, I must say. And we had Sylvie directing those, Sylvie Boyden. And I remember we filmed the scene where he actually takes his life. And I'm saying, you know, what about me? Why are you doing this? What about me? Da, da, da. And he's saying he doesn't want to face this cancer and he'd rather go now and and she was and Sylvie was crying wow and I remember thinking, oh my god Sylvie it almost had you to it it's like you know these things mean things to people you, you know in their own lives and you know, I mean hopefully she was crying because we were doing it so well but also everybody's got their own you know things make other people think of their own sad things yeah, and it, it was really it was intense, I remember, that day. But a good intense. Like It felt like this is really working well. This is going well. Because something like that, we wanted to get it right, obviously. You know those episodes, the one where Polly had the stalker? 
Oh yeah, there was there, there was like a trilogy of them, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah, they were a bit weird, weren't they? I was yeah. just sitting thinking about them, and they were a bit weird to film because some of them was really creepy, and I remember thinking, this must be what it would feel like if you were filming a horror film. Do you know what I mean? Because there was creepy bits, and I thought, oh god, even I was scared on some of them, the way they were lit, and no, it's okay, right, you've got to walk up those stairs. There was a, a scene where she'd broken into Polly's house, and I had to walk up the stairs, and of course, we, you know, the crew are there, we're acting. But I remember thinking, oh my God, this really <laughs> feels creepy. <laughs> Mad episode. Lawrence Moody directed them, he was quite a star. Yeah. yeah. He knew his stuff. Oh, he's lovely, Lawrence. And I'd worked with him before on Big Deal. Oh, Lawrence cool. Moody as well. And quite a lot of the um, directors had worked on Big Deal. And then, I mean, John Strickland, for example. Yeah. Lovely John Strickland, another brilliant director. He'd been the editor on Big Deal. No way. I know. Although I'd never met him, I remember being, you know, getting a cup of coffee at the bill in our little coffee point and him saying to me, oh, you, we've never met, but... I know every inch of your face because I'm the editor <laughs> from Big Deal. I wow. mean, it, yeah, it was really weird. It was like, oh my god, that is weird. Oh, he was a, he was a brilliant director, John Strickland as well. Well, still is. Yeah, he needs to keep <laughs> you in line of duty. Yeah. I know, I know. I saw it and Sue Tully. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and she was. She came in and directed. She was brilliant. Everybody loved her. I remember at the end of her episode. The first one she came in and did, all the crew clubbed together and bought her a little present. And she was wow. really embarrassed about it. It was so oh. sweet. Yeah, I know. It was really nice. <laughs> really nice. Does it help when a director has been an actor themselves? They they know they know how you feel and, and what you have to go through sometimes? I guess yes would be the obvious answer, of course. And with Sue, she obviously knew. But even John Strickland, I don't think being an actor... But the fact that he's done all the editing and everything, I think it's probably good to know a little bit about each department, isn't it, really? Even if you're the actor, it's really good to know about editing. Or I remember years ago, I can't think what, what job I was doing, but I did this thing at the BBC and it was continuity. And it was like a course. So I went along as the actress, you know, and I did the thing and they were learning continuity. So it was really brilliant insight for me because then I understood their job a little bit better. So I knew that, you know, if I touch my head on that word, I need to touch my head on that word on every single take. Obviously, you know these things, but I realised just how important it was. Sometimes don't, you know, don't overdo it. Don't be flicking your hair or anything because you're going to have to do it again and again and again, which isn't such a bad thing. But to make it look natural on take 10, that you're flicking, you've done something like put your hair behind your ears, suddenly can look look a bit weird. Your hands suddenly think, oh my God, I've got to move my hair. So you don't want to be doing that. You know what I mean? You've got to keep it, (laughs) keep it real. It it still must, even though you, you know, you wanted obviously to be your family um, and prioritise that, it, it must have been, very tough to leave for good. Oh, you know what? It, I mean, to be honest, I never thought in a million years I would be there that long. I didn't even know that actors stayed in a job that long. So it was always longer. And you've always got that thing of like, you know, it, are you sort is it a bit of a cop out <laughs> to sort of stay? <laughs> same job maybe are you not you know it's so comfortable here and you know the fear of maybe you might not get another job or da 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 but I just loved it there so much that I just I was almost yeah if I wasn't gonna have family and things you know I was thinking I loved it there I really did I just but really it was time to go I should have really gone a little bit earlier to be honest but it was time to go. You can't, you don't want to stay there forever. But at the same time, I really did love it. I loved it. So when I left it, I was sad. I was really sad to be leaving everyone because even if you see people again all the time, 
you know, working with people, like I was saying earlier, and you're in their everyday lives and they're in your everyday lives. And, you know, you're never, you're never that, you could never recreate that, can you, really? But there is also an element of relief. When you leave, it's like a, a little bit of a relief because it is so intense and you give it your everything that it is like a little bit of a relief that you're not beholden to anyone. You haven't, you know, you're not, you haven't got to be here, you haven't got to be there, you haven't got to... Yeah, it is a, there is a little element of relief. I don't mean, mean to sound ungrateful in any way, but there is that little thing of, oh, it's like a freedom thing almost. A bit like, you know, when you leave school or you leave home, of course, you know, you, change is always a bit scary, but there is that little element, isn't there, that you think, oh, I've only got to keep myself happy now, <laughs> you know. But, uh, because obviously, day in, day out, there are days when you're just, you know, you're not in the mood or something in your life might be happening and you've got to go in and do it. And you are Polly Page, you know? You've got to be her and do whatever's going on in her world, even though you might be thinking, oh, my God, I'm stressing about something in my life. So there is that element of relief. And I think everybody, other people I've spoke to have felt that as well. But listen, the re- if there was any, if you are sad when you leave, it's only because it was so fantastic while you were there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If you're happy when you leave, then it wasn't so great, was it? Really? So naturally, after those years, you're going to feel a bit sad and relieved. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are your hopes for the future? What 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 kind of roles would you like to do do you know what now my the kids are getting bigger and that i would love to do i miss acting and i would love really to yeah to just do some acting really get back into acting a little bit more yeah i wouldn't mind yeah obviously i would love to be in something that that i can get home from something that's in london but that would be my dream do you know what I mean? I know that sounds awful, doesn't it? No. But then, then you could have everything, couldn't you? You could have to, a job where you're you're acting, and you've got your whole home life as well. That would be really good, cushy. I'm the same at the minute. I'm trying to chase that balance between career and life and projects and fun and creativity. And uh, you know, I think nowadays it's. It is possible with technology there, you know, you can you can yeah. almost do whatever you want to do and as long as you can pay the bills and, you know, it's it's kind of worth it, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. It depends how much you want something, doesn't it, really? Yeah. At the end of the day, if it's something you want, then you'll, you know, you'll do what you've got to do to make it happen, really. But I'm so caught up in my family life really. Now, my, like I say, they're getting bigger. It's only recently I sort of thought, oh my God, they really are getting big. This is really, they're running away with me. They're getting slow, you know, you think, they're not going to need me anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I need to move on. Yeah. No, you know what? I love acting and I truly miss it. I didn't know that I would have such a big gap from it. So I would like to do anything really to that can, yeah. The fans will be so grateful that you've done this, as am I. I'm absolutely chuffed that you've spent so much time sharing your awesome memories. And something we like to do is support a charity of your choice. So is there a charity that uh, you know the listeners can donate a couple of quid to? That's a lovely idea. That's so not... Right, it would be the St Christopher's Hospice, Sydenham. Okay. In Sydenham? Hospice Sydenham? Yes. St. Christopher's Hospice. That's a really nice idea. That's kind, yeah. Yeah, and people do. I, I get messages from fans saying I've donated a tenner to that. You know, I, people, oh, people really do that support. Really, that's nice. Very nice. Yeah. I'll pop a link to that when the episodes go live. This will be a two-parter. Uh <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> chat, chat, chat. No, it's brilliant. It's gold dust. It's fantastic. <laughs> And and to to sum up, in terms of the fans who will be listening to this, fans of you, fans of Polly Page, what is your message to 
fans of the bill who 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 still just love your work? Uh, do you know what? People come up to me even now, and I feel like it's people maybe of a certain age that come up to me now, they're probably in their early 30s, and they say to me, oh, my God, you were, like, part of my growing up. Oh. And do you know what? I get it. I actually do get it, because I feel that, we, you know, there's people that me and my husband think, oh, my God, I grew up with that person, and they're on the telly. <laughs> so I do... I do get that, and I think that is. Uh, I think maybe because it's been such a while since it's, you know what it's like. Because it's been it's been a long time since the bill was on. It actually feels really nice to chat about it. If any, you know, if someone comes up and says something, it's a real compliment. Mm. You know, I, I feel chuffed that I might have been part of their enjoyment of viewing, or a time when they sat round with their mum and dad, or their brothers or their nan and, and watch something together. And, yeah, I, I feel, honestly, it is a really nice feeling. And also, I guess, because the character I played was a nice character, people are always nice to me when they see me and, you know, they come up and recognise me. They're always so nice. So it's always a lovely feeling, really. Yeah, I'm delighted to, that people enjoyed it so much. I enjoyed it too. I enjoyed working on it. I enjoyed watching it. I loved it, really. So I'm pleased that they like it. What an absolute legend. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed chatting to the wonderful Lisa Gay. I am so grateful that she was so generous with her time. We actually did that interview over two calls because she remembered so fondly her time on the bill. And I think it shows. And yeah, really enjoyed that. Lisa's nominated charity is St. Christopher's Hospice in Sydenham. Their vision is of a world in which all dying people and those close to them have access to the care and support they need when and wherever they need it. So I think that's a pretty good cause to support. You can find out more and make a donation at stchristophers.org.uk and that's St. St. Christopher's. Dot org dot uk. I am really excited to announce the launch of the Bill Podcast Patreon channel. By supporting with a monthly pledge for more content to be produced, for more exclusive content they receive. If you check out patreon.com forward slash the Bill Podcast, for five pounds a month you can get access to next month's The Bill Podcast a month early. And I'm excited to reveal that the next Bill podcast is an interview with the legendary Todd Carty, who played PC Gabriel Kent. Sergeant patrons spending the equivalent of £10 will also get access to a Series 4 episode of the Bill podcast half a year in advance. And this first Series 4 exclusive for patrons will be an interview with Alan Westaway, who played PC Nick Slater. An Inspector patron for the equivalent of £15, you'll be able to hear an exclusive audio commentary with a member of the production team over one of the half an hour episodes of The Bill. And I'm excited to reveal that the first interviewee for an audio commentary of The Bill podcast is Mr Tony Virgo. He was the producer at the time that The Bill moved from Barbie Road to the Merton Film Studios. So what better episode for him to share his memories of producing the show than the iconic Trojan horse, Mark Powley's final episode as Ken Melvin. And for Chief Super patrons, you can enjoy an extra audio commentary. Every patron gets access to a special short comedy film I've made with Suzanne Maddock and John Isles. For the Inspector and Chief Super patrons, you'll actually get your name read out on the closing credits as a co-producer and executive producer, if you're a Chief Super patron. So yeah, if you fancy being an executive producer of a podcast get involved there's more perks than the ones i've mentioned those are the highlights 
and I can't tell you what your support would mean. So check out patreon.com forward slash the bill podcast. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you very soon for more Sunhill Goldust. Bye for now.